Right guys, welcome back to the channel. So what I thought we'd talk about today is a subject that I see um, spoken about online, on forums, on groups, even on YouTube. And a lot of people ask the question, what's the best lurcher to own? What's the best type? What's, you know, what do you think is the best put together lurcher? What cross would you have? Um, and when people ask this question, what tends to happen is you get like 50 different answers uh, because really what you're going to get is you're going to get the answer. Um, it's everyone's personal preference. So you're going to have people who say, um, you know, I, I swear by Collie Cross Greys or Collie Whippets or Whippets or Betty Whippets, or Betty Greyhounds, or whatever the case may be, you're going to get 50 different answers and 50 different reasons. Um, so I've been around lurchers for quite a long time. I've seen every type of different cross you can think of, and I've seen them work day and night, and I can honestly, honestly say, <sighs> they all work well. They all work well. What I think is more important is, and that people need to think about more, is it's how you enter a dog to its working career that is probably the most important thing rather than what it's got in it. Um, sure, look at the cross you have because certain breeds in that cross are going to bring you certain traits. To an extent that does matter, but I think from when you get a lurcher as a puppy and you start its training, you know, you want to train that dog so it's biddable, so it's stock broken, so it retrieves all the basics, you know, good recall. You can do that with any cross a lurcher. Some dogs can be harder to train than others. So I'll give you an example of this. Um, if you go on any forum online, whatever, whatever you want, um, you'll see the same argument and it is mainly based around Salukis and Saluki crosses. And you get people that absolutely love them. And then you get people that say they're useless, they're untrainable, they don't come back. If I'm really honest, most of the people who say stuff like that have never owned one. They've just, this is just hearsay. And maybe the people that have owned one and haven't had a good experience, they've either bought somebody else's crap or they're just lazy. You know, I know lots of people who will get a dog, they stick it in a kennel, it stays in the kennel until September. They take them out and they expect that dog to be a world beater. Well, you know, at the end of the day, you can do that with a Saluki or Saluki cross. You can stick them in a kennel all spring, all summer, ignore them, you know, chuck some food in. Come September, you take them out, you want to run them. Oh, they'll run what you want them to run. But if you expect them to come back, why would they? So it really, like I say, it, it what it comes down to is how you start that dog. So for me personally... I don't really care too much what's in the makeup of a lurcher because there's so many crosses now. And let's face it, you never truly know. You're going by the word of the person you're buying the dog off of. You don't know what is in that line 20 years back. What I would be more interested in is do the parents work and how well do they work? Um... And when I say a working dog, I don't mean something that's gone out once in a blue moon and caught five rabbits on the lamp and it's a world beater, you know. OK, fine. If the parents have worked consistently and they're good workers, you know, a lot of the time, if you do a worker to worker. Yeah, saying they're going to be great pups, you still don't know, but, you know, it helps. So what you need to do is once you've got your pup, you need to do all the basics. You need to, you know, you need to train it to um, recall, um, you know, get it. Everything you would do with a normal dog, you know, you socialize it, uh, you stock break it, which is important. 
Uh, you teach it to retrieve, you teach it to jump. And then the crunch moment is when you start a, start a dog for the first time in the field. And this is another thing that I've seen time and time and time again. And what people tend to do is they let their impatience get the better of them. And they'll take that dog out at five, six months old. They'll run it. Um, you know, they're still a pup. They're still a pup at that age. They're not going to, they're not going to be anything special. And what they do is they run them on a rabbit or whatever they're running them on. And they're not ready for it. And then what you have then is a frustrated, a frustrated pup. That'll be a yapper. And once a pup starts yapping, you know, it's just going to carry that on more than likely into its adult life. Um, and then that's a, that's that dog ruined because of impatience. So what, what you really want to do is you want to wait until that pup is 11, 12 months old. And if you want to take it out on the lamp, what, what I think is best to do is you need to stack all the cards in that dog's favour. They need to be completely stacked in that dog's favour. So, you know, pick a good night. Um, find squatting rabbits, you know. I know people who sniff at squat, squatting rabbits who say, oh, there's no sport in it. Fine, whatever, you know. I will, to, even to this day with a dog that, you know, knows what he's doing. If I see a squatting rabbit, I'll never pass that up. You know, the dog take it off the squat. Yeah, it's not much of a run. Who cares? He's got more gas in the tank for the next run. So, you know, the important thing for me isn't what's in a dog or in a dog's makeup. It's more how that dog's brought on. Um, because as I've said, I've seen so many different crosses and they've all worked equally as well. Um, and they've just been brought upright. You know, they've they've been entered properly. Um, and at the end of the day, it can be a collie cross, grey, it can be a collie cross whippet, it can be a Betty Ground, it can be a pure whippet, it can be a Saluki cross. The end result should be the same. You know, that dog should be putting rabbits in the bag day or night and it should be doing it, you know, all the time. Um, and, and and the same with ferreting, you know, if, if you're going to enter a dog, there are, I will say there are... Um, there are dogs that do things better. Like if, say for instance, with Bryn, you know, Saluki Whippet Greyhound, he will go ferreting, he does mark, he will catch rabbits. Does he do it as well as my Whippet did? Mm, no. Um, the simple fact is we've got massive hedges here that we ferret and my Whippet would get in the hedge and she would catch a lot of the rabbits in the hedge. Could he do that? Yeah, he's done it. Does he do it consistently? No, because he's just too big. You know, um, would my Whippet be able to uh, catch some of the rabbits that he catches on the lamp, like a long slip? No, you know, the, a Whippet hasn't got enough gas in his tank for that. Um, would she catch rabbits on the lamp, you know, that uh, what some would consider would be pretty easy slips and, you know, moderate slips in small paddocks? Yep, excelled at that. Can he? Yep. Does he do it as consistently as a Whippet? Nah, probably not. You know, he's better at where there's a bit of a longer run. Um, you know, I, there is a saying, horses for courses, hounds for grounds, which is true. But whatever dog you pick, um, I would tend to forget. Don't get so hung up in what's in it. Because, as I've said, you know, two or three times, I've seen many, many different crosses do many, many different jobs. Um you know, if I most of the time when we're ferreting, I'm not bolting to the dog anyway. So him not being able to do what my whippet does doesn't really matter because we've got long nets all around. What what you want in a ferreting dog is something that marks. You know, if if the dog does nothing else but mark, it doesn't matter because if you've got a dog that consistently marks, then you're not wasting your day. Um, which is something else that I see people do as well. Um, I've seen videos of people with pups and um, they're encouraging the pup to mark. You know, they'll they'll be on a rabbit one and go, what's that, what's that, what's that pointing at the hole? Don't do it. 
don't just don't bother because what you need to understand about dogs is they will do something if they know it pleases you so they're going to mark that when you go what's that what's that what's that what's that and re repeatedly do it and they're going to end up doing that and sniffing putting their head down the hole and you in your head you think god that dog's doing a great job it's marking but when when it comes to it and you net up a warren and there's nothing in it and your dog's marked it you automatically then blame the dog and say oh the dog's useless and but that's that person's fault all you need to do is a dog will mark by itself you know it might not do it when you first take it out when it's young but once it gets to know the game and once it twigs it will start marking for you so all you need to do is let that dog loose where the warrens are and just watch it and a dog will mark some dogs will mark differently than others you know some will give a real strong mark and it's obvious some dogs will scratch at the hole some dogs will just stand staring at the hole but learn how your dog marks naturally instead of encouraging it you know there are do there are certain uh dogs that have much better noses like if you you know something to think about if you are interested in what's in the dog you know like beddies and stuff like that will have great noses on them but as I say, he will mark. You know, it's it. A dog really, really, really is what you make it. Um, and not all dogs, not all dogs make it anyway, even when brought on right. But if, if you do that initial work and you start that dog off right, then what is in that dog's makeup shouldn't really matter that much. Um, I understand people who want, like, um, Let's give an example like a Betty Whippet or a Betty Grey because they're going to have that good rough coat on them. You know, if you're up on moors or somewhere where, you know, you've you've got bad weather and strong wind and stuff, you know, a thin coated dog is going to suffer up there. So, yeah, you know, for, for small things like that, it's great. But work wise, I just just don't see the point it's just it's, it really is just nitpicking you know because I've I've seen dogs that are a Betty Whippet that work just as well as a Saluki Grey or you know a Gru Whippet Greyhound that'll work just as well as a Whippet it's just it's yeah it's really how that dog's brought on how you've started its career um so when I see all these debates going on I just think you know because because you get so many different answers, it's, it is such a hard one to uh, for that person to then digest all of that. Because you know you you'll end up getting people putting uh, videos and pictures of their dogs out working, and that's great. I mean, that man could then go out and buy, say, for instance, a Collie Grey or a Bedlington Whippet, and he could completely and utterly just mess it up. And it will turn out rubbish. And then in his head, then he thinks, oh, that's a crap cross. That's, that's you know, it's not going to do the job. It's, you know, uh, blah, -de blah, -de blah, blah, blah. And then he'll go on the internet and he'll slate them. And, you know, like as I said, similar with the Slooky crosses, people say they're ignorant and stuff like that. They're not ignorant. Um, has he been the easiest lurcher I've had? Pretty much. I'm going to say, yeah. Like, I didn't really have to do a lot with him. Um, I didn't find him ignorant at all. Um, yeah, what I think about that is, is that they really are like a one-person dog. You need to, but with any dog, you need to have a certain bond with it. You need to put the time in with it. You need to spend the time with them when they're young, get them biddable. And, you know, once you've entered them right, you're going to have a great, a great time. Uh, with that dog you know you're going to see that dog shine and do its job um, a lot of the people who who moan about about different types and different breeds they just in my mind they just haven't got a bloody clue how to bring a dog on um, as I said they just think stick a dog in a kennel ignore it and then when they want to take it out to work it should be bang on it um, another thing I see which people use to promote certain dogs is um i've seen this online a lot and you get these lads and they'll put a picture up say like 
all these lads work collie crosses and you know they they rate them and um they'll put a picture up and you know there'll be a huge lineup of rabbits there like 50 rabbits and there'll be three or four dogs or whatever and everyone's banging comments going oh bloody hell they're brilliant dogs great great brilliant but when you look at a picture like that what you've got to think is if there's three or four dogs there and there's 50 rabbits <laughs> they're normal dogs they're average you know they're catching 10 11 rabbits you know most lurchers that have been entered correctly and you know catch well you can go out on your own and get 9, 10, 11 rabbits, you know, if the land holds that amount, you're going to catch that amount, you know, you, you're only ever going to catch what's there, it doesn't mean the dog's crap, it just means maybe you haven't got a lot of rabbits on your ground, so you really do have to try and ignore certain things like that, um, and I understand it, people use it to promote, you know, the dog when, if they're going to have a litter out of it or whatever, which is all well and good, you know, they're showing the dog works, but I think there's certain certain things, you know, that um, that go unsaid and unseen. Um, you know, lots of people will say, "Oh, the dogs; these types of dogs will never miss," and it's just it's just crap. It's just crap. All dogs miss. You know, I've never owned a dog yet that hasn't had a bad night. You know, sometimes I've been out and with an experienced dog, and they just they've just had a crap night, an off night, and they blank. You blank and you could be stood next to your mate with his dog and his dog could be smashing it and your dog's running like a pile of crap. What can you do? Blame the dog? Nah, this is, this is what it is. You just got to suck it up. And then the next night you go out, the dog could be an absolute, absolutely on fire and not miss a thing. It's, you know. So, yeah, the, the, the main reason for this video was I just wanted to talk about um, what I think about different lurch types and different crosses you know I've, I've never personally been like too worried about what's in a lurch I've I've never bothered because I've always thought you know if I if I have that lurcher from a pup and I train it the way I want to train it and the way I think I should do it you know stock breaking all the basics you know then there's no reason why that dog regardless of what's in it there's no reason why that dog shouldn't go on to success in the field and you know i have fun watching it um you, you know you see in my videos there's um three or four different types of dogs out you know you've seen in my old videos my whip it um you've seen there's a few clips of her out ferreting and a couple of her out lamping you've seen brin on the lamp and ferreting uh, you've seen jake the black and white dog he's literally got a bit of everything in him he is a mishmash of Ball, whip it, greyhound, bit of Betty, think a touch of deer around, whatever else is in him, you know, he goes out, he does the job. You've seen uh, the little uh, white dog, Sam, little collie whip it. You've seen him out ferreting. Does he do it any better than my whip it? Nope. Did my whip it do it any better than him? Nope. <laughs> you know, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if he's been brought on properly, Jake's been brought up well. Brin's been brought up well. So what you're seeing is different types of lurcher, different crosses of lurcher that have all been entered correctly and they're all doing just as well as each other. They have their own styles um, and they do things in their own little different ways, but the end result is the same. So don't be too hit up about what's in a dog. You know, everyone's got their own personal preference. People like Betty Whippets, people like Betty Grays, people like Collie Whippets, Collie Grays, people like a mis mishmash of them all. It doesn't matter. If if that dog can go out and do what you want it to do, then that's great. You know, I've tried all different types. I've tried all different... Um, I had one dog, a white, a white lurcher bitch, and she literally had everything in her. Ball, Betty, Gray, um, Whippet uh collie she had a mixture of everything in it and she worked well enough but she didn't work any better than any other dog i've i've kept but no worse so it, it at the end of the day it doesn't matter it's but it's the time and the effort you put into training that dog so yeah that's just my thoughts about that anyway and um 
I'd like to hear what you what you like to run or what you're running now, what you like to work or even your opinion on it. If you agree or disagree with me, that's a great thing about this YouTube and social media. People can put their opinions out there and then you can have a debate about it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, give this video a like as well. Um, I'm actually out. I think I'm out ferreting on Sunday and uh I know a few of you are going to be going, oh, no, you shouldn't be ferreting this time of year. Um, but generally, I'll ferret from August to April. Um, I'll ferret as late as I can until I can get away with it. And then we, you know, shock horror, everyone, get ready. We lamp pretty much throughout the spring and summer because we cover a lot of ground. Um, as long as the ground's not too hard, the dogs are out and they're doing their bit. You know, a working dog should work all year round, not three or four months of the year, you know, to me, it's just like, you know, you're wasting, you're wasting your dog, you know, you may have 10 good years with that dog working life, make the most of it. So yeah, um, I shall try and film Sunday if we do get out. It's a roadside hedge. Um, if it, you know, if the traffic noise is going to be too much, I won't film it. But if I'm on the field side, then I'll, uh, I'll get some footage for you guys. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone for watching and uh, stay tuned for another video soon. Cheers, guys.